The field goal might only be worth three points, but it's still one of the most essential ways of scoring in American football. In 2018, 73 NFL games were decided by three points or fewer, more than any other season in league history. So the kickers responsible for making field goals, otherwise known as place kickers, are under a lot of pressure to perform. Yeah, there's a lot of stress that goes into it. You're either the hero or you're the villain. A well-placed kick can make or break a game, or sometimes even a season. And the longer a kicker's range, the greater the strategic threat they pose. The NFL's most lethal place kickers have sent balls flying through the uprights from 40, 50, even 60 yards away. In 2013, Matt Prater kicked the longest field goal in NFL history when he hit one from 64 yards. Now look, a 64-yard field goal is already a tremendous feat of athleticism. But coaches, players, and sports scientists all agree that it's only a matter of time until someone kicks one even farther potentially a lot farther. In practice, some players have made field goals from more than 80 yards away, but that's without any pads on, without a crowd cheering or booing at you, and without a defensive line doing everything in its power to block your kick. What we wanted to know is what is the absolute physical limit when it comes to the field goal. So today, we're gonna look at why making a field goal from 90 yards away is almost impossible. To find out what it takes, I talked with one of the best place kickers on earth. I equate it to golf or to baseball. If things aren't lined up, it doesn't matter how strong you are, it's not going to be as good of a kick. Took a crack at hitting a 25 yarder oh, myself. Ah, come on! And discussed the elements of a perfect place kick with a biomechanist. We need the ball to launch with a high velocity at the right angle and be accurate. Harrison Butker has mastered all of those elements. Butker is the starting kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs, and he's known for having one of the most powerful and most consistent kicks in the NFL. People don't realize how much work we actually put in. Just because we can't come out and do a lot of kicks in practice or even in the game doesn't mean that there's a lot of stuff we can't do on the side as far as um, uh, watching film, taking care of our body, doing mental reps. I mean, kicking, a lot of it is mental. We met up at Cole's Kicking Camp in Whitewater, Wisconsin, where he talked me through the finer points of place kicking. Back to forward, but also from this kind of left to right motion from back there around. Before we get started, here's um, a summary of what a typical field goal looks like. Straight down There's the, the snap, the hold, and the kick, all of which take place in about a second. So let's say the snap and hold are good. Now let's look at how to approach the ball. You've got me here at the 15 yard line. So 15 plus 10 for the end zone. This is 25 yards. 25 yard field yeah. goal right That's, down the middle. I like your confidence in me. Yeah, but you got the soccer <laughs> shoes on, man. Maybe you're fooling me. And yes, I was wearing soccer shoes. A lot of professionals actually do that. They wear a soccer cleat on their kicking foot because it gives them a better feel for the ball and a football cleat on their plant foot to help them get better traction. But the truth is no shoe on earth was gonna make up for my terrible form. All right, so we need to get it up. So Butker gave me some tips, starting with my foot placement. Your plant foot you want facing straight down your target line, and then you're going to want this, your kicking foot to be, bam, perpendicular. Am I, to be I was also using the wrong joint? part of my uh, foot. No. You're going to want to have like way up there. That's what a lot of people don't realize, that we're making contact with the ball all the way up there. That's the strongest part of your foot, right there on that bone. Oh, not bad. Ah, come on! Went straight, you had the height. It's <laughs> like looking what? better. High school extra point, that's good. In high school, that would have been good. Exactly. Too bad I'm 32, okay. Finally, Butker gave me some tips on where to stand. I had been backing up way behind the ball, thinking that a running start would help boost my power. But Butker says that's not always the case. Well, the most important thing is your contact. So even if you're sprinting up to the ball, if your contact isn't perfect, then it doesn't matter how much momentum you had. Because the farther away I get, the more opportunity I have to mess up or um, you know, just being consistent. Really, as long as that last step's good and you get good contact, that's the most important, important thing. But also, in a game, you have 1.3 seconds from standing still to making contact with the ball. So if you're super far away, it's going to get blocked. Right. You know? So you kind of have to be closer as well. Hey! Nice. <laughs> All right. Look at that. That was our last ball. Okay. Last ball, we're out. That was great. Okay, so I literally just kind of put together all of the tips that you gave me yeah. in the last second there. I wasn't Next, so far away. it was Bucker's turn. 
Why don't you show me how this is done? Here. Now, it's the off season for Bucker, so he wasn't about to blow his leg out showing me up. Still, he made it look effortless. Not the greatest, but it went through. And once he had warmed up, he made it look just as easy from 50 yards. Which makes sense. He's one of the best kickers on the planet. But why is Bucker so good? To find out, I talked to biomechanist Chase Pfeiffer. He stops there at the ball and rotates around. So he's using his plant leg to whip his kicking leg around. In 2015, Pfeiffer developed an advanced motion tracking system to help deconstruct the flight of a field goal. This helped him determine optimum foot speeds, impact locations, and launch angle. Now, there are three things that really set Pfeiffer's research apart. Number one, most studies on kicking have focused on soccer, not American football. Number two, most of those studies were performed using two-dimensional analyses. Pfeiffer's analyses were done in three dimensions, which gave him a lot more insight into the dynamics of players' kicks. And number three, in addition to studying the form of elite place kickers, he also built this. It's a field goal bot. And unlike a human kicker, it can kick a football the exact same way every single time. Humans are unpredictable and inconsistent. And a mechanical robot, same thing every time. By cross-referencing his player data with his robot data, Pfeiffer was able to analyze how things like foot placement, foot velocity, and overall coordination affect the quality of a given kick. The most important variable of all? Impact location. Where a player's foot makes contact with the ball. His research shows that the key to a monstrous field goal boils down to two things. How much force you can deliver to the ball and where you deliver that force. Pfeiffer says that when an elite place kicker's foot makes contact, it's usually traveling between 42 and 49 miles per hour, and that can deliver more than 3,000 newtons of force to the ball. The faster your foot moves, the faster the ball leaves the ground, and the farther it travels. Now, the ideal launch angle for distance for a projectile, as any freshman physics student will tell you, is 45 degrees. But when you account for drag, Pfeiffer says the ideal launch angle for a football, toppling end over end, is actually closer to 40 degrees three degrees. And to kick the ball at that precise angle, you need to kick it right here, about two and a half inches off the ground or a quarter of the way up the ball. Kicking the ball on this sweet spot helps achieve the ideal launch angle while minimizing the foot velocity required to maximize distance. In other words, hitting the ball right here lets you kick it farther, easier. If you say that's halfway and a quarter is about right there, um, that's generally where you want to hit it. I mean, if you hit it a little low, it's going to be a good ball. It's just going to be spinning more. But if you hit it too high up, that's when you're going to hit a, a line drive knuckleball. That precise combination of power and foot placement is what enabled Matt Prater to kick the longest field goal in NFL history in 2013, when he sent the ball flying through the uprights from 64 yards away. Now here's the thing. Place kickers have actually been kicking about that far for almost half a century. In 1970, New Orleans Saints kicker Tom Dempsey blasted a 63-yard game-winning field goal against the Detroit Lions. His record stood for over 40 years. And there are a few things that make Dempsey's record remarkable. For one, he was born without any toes on his kicking foot and was outfitted with this custom shoe. While it's unclear if that gave him an unfair advantage, the NFL eventually created a rule that standardized kicking cleats. The other thing that's incredible about Dempsey's record is that since he set it, despite improvements in equipment and training, almost nobody has been able to outdo him, at least not during a game. And of the players who have come close, most of them were kicking at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, where balls fly farther through the thin air. Dempsey, on the other hand, set his record at Tulane Stadium in New Orleans, just a few feet above sea level. Since then, nobody but Prater has managed to kick the ball farther during a game. But one thing kickers have improved over the years? Their accuracy. For as long as the NFL has been keeping records on field goals, place kickers have been hitting their marks more and more consistently, from every distance. Today's NFL kickers are as successful from 50 yards as 1970s kickers were from 30. And a lot of their accuracy has to do with how they kick. Prior to the 1970s, most place kickers would run at the ball head on and kick it with the tips of their shoes. It's called a toe kick, 
and while it can be powerful, it is also notoriously inaccurate. But starting in the late 60s, players began making contact with the ball high up on the instep of their kicking foot, the way a soccer player would. You have a lower launch speed, but you have a much more consistent impact um, with that larger area. So the end result there being increased accuracy. By the mid-1970s, most place kickers had begun to favor the soccer kick over the toe kick. And today, nobody kicks with their toe, at least not in the NFL. And that's because when it comes to place kicking at the professional level, accuracy matters more than power. Guys in the NFL don't necessarily have the strongest leg. There's a lot of guys in college that have these massive legs that might not make it in the NFL because they don't have the accuracy. You know, so if you want to have a long career, you got to be able to be consistent over a, a long period of time. Once you're able to kick with power, place kicking is essentially a geometry problem. The angle of your kick needs to be steep enough to clear the line of defenders trying to block your kick, and it needs to be straight enough to avoid flying too far left or right of the goalposts. And the farther from the field goal you get, the smaller your margin of error becomes. A 20-yard field goal has to stay within a 17 and a half degree window to count. But from 60 yards, that window shrinks to just under six degrees. Say so you're hitting a 60-yard field goal, if that thing's slowly tilling to the right, you might miss that, but if it was an extra point, that would be good. If that was a 40-yarder, that would have been good. Uh, so you just have to be a lot more accurate. You might be wondering how these guys handle that kind of pressure. The answer, actually pretty well, which might be what sets pros apart from the non-professionals. As soon as I start jogging on that field, I completely forget about everything. Uh, I, ideally, I don't even hear the crowd noise, and uh, I'm just focusing on what I can control. And there's research showing that the key to success at that level is to replicate game time pressure during practice, even if it's just in your head. What I like to do in practice is I say, okay, I have, I have three or four balls I'm gonna hit from these spots. I run on, I mentally uh, almost try to envision that there's a crowd there. I try to put some pressure on it, and then also quality over quantity. So let's say a place kicker comes along with unprecedented power and accuracy. How far could they realistically kick? and how precise would they need to be for their kick to count? It turns out the answer to both of those questions is pretty straightforward. According to Pfeiffer's calculations, a record-breaking 70-yard field goal kicked at sea level without wind would require a foot speed of around 49 miles per hour delivered directly to the ball's sweet spot. And an 80-yarder would take a foot speed of around 56 miles per hour. And both of those speeds are well within the realm of current human ability. In fact, the foot velocities of elite soccer players have been clocked at more than 60 miles per hour, which in theory is good enough for a 90 yard field goal. Now it's true, soccer players have a few distinct advantages over place kickers when it comes to kicking a ball far. Number one, they're not outfitted in full pads, which can really slow down your foot velocity. Number two, they're not trying to clear a wall of gigantic humans who can use their hands to block your kick. And number three, Unless they're kicking, say, a penalty kick, they're typically not performing in the same sorts of high-stakes, all-or-nothing scenarios that place kickers are. And yet, place kickers are definitely capable of record-shattering distances today. Check out this footage of Bucker blasting a 90-yard, 4.4-second hang time kickoff. But of course, kickoffs don't need to be as accurate. So then the challenge becomes placing that kind of kick between the uprights while under the pressure and constraints typical of a field goal. Remember how the margin for error shrinks the further away you get? Well, from 90 yards, the window of your lateral angle shrinks to just 3.9 degrees. Is it improbable? Yes. Impractical? Absolutely. In fact, it's hard to even conceive of a game time scenario in which any coach would even think to attempt a field goal from more than 70 yards away instead of going for, say, a Hail Mary. Not that it hasn't happened. In 2008, while playing for the Oakland Raiders, kicker Sebastian Janikowski was called on to attempt a field goal from 76 yards, the farthest attempt in NFL history. We couldn't actually afford to pay the NFL for the footage of that kick, but just take our word for it, it came up short. The point is, all of the factors are there for somebody to come along and kick a precedent-shattering field goal. I would not be surprised if at some point in my day I saw somebody kick a upper 80s, maybe even 90. I think they could do 85. I mean, guys are doing 
up to 90 yard kickoffs. So why couldn't you do an 85 yard field goal, you know? Yeah. I definitely think 85 um, you could do. If you had a really stiff back wind, it was a sunny, warm day, you had a nice ball, you had tall grass, I mean, everything was perfect. I think 85 you could do. But until all those things line up, remember that what players like Harrison Bucker are doing today is already almost impossible.